everyone, I'm Shannon Slatten. This is Thomas Hollingsworth Park. It's a quiet place without a playground or a ball field. The Hollingsworth family says this is a special place for them. The youngest son, Ryan, lives in Florida now, and he says no matter where he may go, it's good to know his father's memory is still here in this place. I had a lot of friends, family uh, that always would drive by and, and you know shoot you a message or something, say, "Hey, driving by your dad's park." Scott Hollingsworth keeps a photo of his dad around. In it, his dad is holding a fish that's almost as big as Scott was. And he really loved his family. He wanted to do everything and everything to make the family great, and that's that's what I do remember from him. Scott was nine years old when his father decided to stop at the fire station one night. We were coming back from a, a hockey game or a hockey practice. I can't remember which one it was, but. He he just ran by the station and he said, well, I got to run and see what was happening and then that, and that night happened. So January 17, 1984, 17 below zero. 30 plus years later, Tom Sipe, who was fire chief then, remembers it all. 715 at night. There was a house on fire on McNair Drive. It was dark and the house was built, was was actually breathing. And what happens is it was ready to go. Firefighters didn't know if anyone was inside, and Tom Hollingsworth was the type of guy who wanted to be the one to check it out. We called him Holly, and he was always there. He wanted to be where the action was. And so he was an interior man. But so many things went wrong on that night. And so I came up, he said, what's the problem? He said, they're running out, they ran out of air. Thomas Hollingsworth gave his air supply to someone else and didn't make it out. And there isn't one of those guys, you know, and even when Holly was down there, I, everybody wanted to go. More than 800 people attended Hollingsworth's funeral, and more than 100 fire trucks were in the funeral procession from Robbinsdale to Fort Snelling. Tom Sipe was a pallbearer. You know, I've lived through it. I, I lost 10, 15 pounds. It almost broke me. The incident has been recorded in books, and other firefighters have learned from what happened to Thomas Tollingsworth. I still talk to guys and they'll bring up, hey, we did a training, and we did a training because of your, your father and what he went through. Lessons that Brandon Hollingsworth, who was almost five when his father died, learned too. He's been a firefighter for Brooklyn Park for 10 years. It was a big step in my life, you know, I mean, not only to honor my, my family's name, but for myself, to do it for myself. Brandon keeps his father's badge here and the nameplate from his dad's locker. He, like his brothers, has a tattoo of his father. He feels the same tug to family and firefighters that his dad did too. I think that was, you know, his legacy was that, you know, he was willing to do whatever he needed to do to obviously support his family, but support his family at the fire department too. Shortly after Thomas Hollingsworth passed away, the city moved quickly to rename a portion of Lakeview Terrace Park in memory of the fallen firefighter. Not much has changed here since then until another local family got involved. Here's their story. We thought of the garland because it's a garden. Ask any craftsman. The smallest of details matter. People aren't going to look that closely on this garland, right? They're going to be just saying how beautiful it is, but there's meaning in this garland. Anna Donato Ghani orders special flowers. We're putting olive branches in this garland for my parents. To make a garland, this color palette is something he loved. That her brother would have loved. The lime green orchid was something that he always ordered. It's all with Victor in mind. Victor Donato opened this flower shop with his sister Anna more than 30 years ago. He was talented, but he never liked to be in the spotlight. What he lived for was standing back and hearing people say, wow, that's beautiful. He had a sudden heart attack and died four years ago. It was a bad morning. That's all I can say. It was very traumatic and um, he passed away in the ambulance going to North Memorial Hospital. The tight-knit family channeled their grief into a cause that Victor would have approved. And that's how we started the foundation because you, you, start, to, you start to put your energy and love into something to keep them in the light and keep them alive. The Victor Donato Memorial Foundation would raise money to revamp Hollingsworth Park. Victor had known the family and he supported the ambassadors who are crowned every year in that park. It's a beautiful park, but I think we can enhance it and make it even more beautiful for years to come. And when you change something, you also bring attention to the park and there's a lot of new people moving to Robbinsdale. So I think we're bringing in light who this man was. He was a firefighter, he lost his life. 
So far, they've raised more than $16,000 for phase one. This garland will be the ribbon that's cut to recognize that effort. The weather is actually perfect for flowers. As long as it doesn't freeze, uh, this will last for weeks and dry. Uh, the garland will dry beautifully. There aren't any plans yet for a plaque or anything to pay tribute to Victor Donato in this park. And Anna says that is fitting because that's the way Victor would have wanted it. Stand back, look at it, marvel at the beauty, and he'll be happy. This is what the first phase looks like. It's a sitting wall where you can sit and look out at the lake. There's a Maltese cross here with Hollingsworth's initials and badge number. Many of these materials were donated and the generosity of the community at large did not go unnoticed at a celebration on October 11th. I actually was shocked when I got here. I thought there'd be maybe 10 people here. And I mean, look, I mean, there's probably 75 to 100 people here. A ribbon cutting that felt more like a reunion. And this is Wonderful, thank you very much. Anna Donato Ghani was careful not to leave anyone out, while all fingers pointed right back at her. I give all the credit to the Donatos. The city couldn't be happier with how citizens led the way. It's really unique for us in, in the city here because we haven't really had many park improvements that have happened that have been all dedicated by private funds, and that's what really makes it really special. The two families really worked well together, and we need more of that in the world of people just cooperating. It hit, it hit home pretty hard, or pretty good actually, uh, with our family. I could tell my mom was gripping my arm a little tighter here and there, so it was, I know it meant a lot to her and our family. Kim Hollingsworth, two of her boys and their families came, including the very youngest grandchild, Thomas Hollingsworth II. I mean, we couldn't be happier with what it looks like and how it turned out. Future phases will include artwork, more landscaping, and possibly a pergola. We have information on those fundraising projects online. This park will always be a place to reflect on sacrifice and dedication to the community, both past and present. Reporting from Hollingsworth Park, Shannon Slatten, CCX News.